To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cut away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cut away. A time to run. To be exercised in it. He has made everything in beautiful in his time, and he has set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God makes from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God does it, that man should fear before him. That which has been in his mouth. And that which is to be heard already been. And God requires that which is heard. So that it works. I know that my little man lives. In number six, we rise to sing.
praise the Lord. This is what we're reading speaking from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 31 to 39. And I read, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that said not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the chains of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died. Yes, rather, that is reason again. Who is able at the right hand of God? Who also make it in possession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or percussion or persecution or famine or nakedness or burial or sorrow? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Me, in all these things, we are more than conquerors, those things that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He shall remain seated as we sing sometimes a right surprising in the market.
Here on behalf of the Council of Home Society of the African Church of the Ascension, I've been asked here to deliver this tribute to our brother in Christ. And of course, so that everybody may know that we truly do miss him also. And of course, uh, I'm going to share him more at this time. This tribute is in honor of our cherished brother in Christ, Brother Shola Begonjami. This cannot be complete without the input and collective contributions of our elderly pioneer members, especially that of our president, Emeritus, Brother Shippo. Before his encounter with him in 2004 and the founding of the Society of the Anglican Church of the Ascension, where our brother Ebunjami was a very, very good part of. According to him, this was at the turbulent period of serious, of serious financial crisis in the society. He wrote that things were so tough for society's survival at that time. He had to go cap to cap in hand to seek for bailout funds from three members. Brother Shola, Bekunjali, being one of them, and the youngest amongst us at that time. And, and, and that his response was instant and spontaneous and in good measure. He also remembers his contributions to the society active to society activities for four years non-stop as a lifeline that kept the society going during this trying period. Brother Shola Ibunjobi was, was a very humble member of our society, known for discreetly helping members of the church. On many occasions, he founded a national conference society and supported the old forearm of the founding of Hope International in Evangelism Missions. His humility, passion for evangelism, and social activities among members of the society were quite remarkable. We have lost a cherished member, a silent giver, a compassionate brother in Christ. We mourn his sudden death at his tender age and pray we find eternal peace, full rest in the bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now on behalf of the executive committee, our past presidents and other members, all our society members, and the entire family, members of the Anglican Church of the Ascension of Heaven, we commiserate with you, Ma, on behalf of our brother, Mrs. Duke Ekunjali, at this time. At this trying times, we pray the Lord strengthen you and support you to carry on in life with the family and children. Amen. I thought we'd have to get that the table. Anybody from the community or from the family? Okay. Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, I am a sacrifice. Every day, I'm to be sleeping up The engineering of me that I know from the call that we were born is the first son of the assignment. My 
my dad, my mom called him the enforcer. Why? Because he took the responsibility of Um, we agree You cannot come to his house and you will not eat. In fact, you will overeat. You will put it down your, your throat if you don't want to eat. By the time they set the table and they give you a consent in it, in fact, if you don't want to eat, you will eat. And when you are going, no matter how little the money is, you will make sure you get something on your way home. When my father died and I called him, he, um, you know, it was during the COVID time. He was in Abuja for a long time. But we couldn't do the meeting until he came back. But the, 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 the year was not open. He couldn't fly. He had to come, make a, a sacrifice to come by a road so that we can, when the lockdown was lifted up, so that we can have a meeting and move forward because we believe that my dad shouldn't be emotionally for such a long time. So he couldn't come. But we all stayed in his house in his city. And he sent something to us, and I'm asked that we know it's comfortable. I really, 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 really miss it. I don't know how, how we are going to, I don't know. I know God will make us survive. But I'm telling you, we have lost a son. We have lost somebody, somebody that is trustworthy, very loving, very nice. What can you say about him? 
I don't, I don't know what to say. I just pray that God will grant him a past a good rest. God will do with his wife, with his children, whatever they are. The father of the father let me watch Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I don't know that I'm going to I want to thank you. If you are not wearing your face mask properly, you may be sent out. Please, help us to help ourselves. It is not for mouth alone or for your chin and your nose. If you know that you cannot cope, please excuse yourself honorably before I ask anybody to call you out. I want to beg you, please. The next day, for all the saints, who from their labor to rest, in number 12. We can stand up to sing. <laughs>
Holy Gospel is written. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 5, beginning at 24 verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears. Life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so have he given to the Son to have life in himself. And have given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the son of man. Marvel not at this, for the eye is coming, in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. This is the gospel of Christ. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we bless your name because you are great. Father in heaven, we adore you, yes, because there is none like you. Lord, we praise your holy name because we know for sure that power of life and death belongs to you. Lord, at this time we are gathered to listen to you. We pray, O oh Lord, that we speak to every one of us in a clear language in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Our ultimate goal is to live with you on that glorious day. Lord, we pray that none of us here this evening be miss heaven in the name of Jesus. We will all be counted worthy to be at the right hand side. In Jesus, was what happened in people pray. Please be seated. We want to bless the name of the Lord for making today a reality. And at the same time, I want to appreciate the vicar of the church, Venerable Family for that privilege to stand before you at this wicked service. It is my prayer that the Lord will bless your ministry in the name of Jesus. We also appreciate the efforts of the Fountain of Hope, 19 NG. We pray that source will not repeat itself in your midst in the name of Jesus. Protection of the Almighty God will rest upon you. We commensurate with Mamont, Eko, Joby, and the entire family. God Almighty will comfort you. We will stand by you and take care of the children in Jesus' name. Quickly, this evening, I just want us to look at the thing that says, death is certain. Death is certain. The text is taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verses 7 and 8. Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verses 7 and 8. I read. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, all is vanity. One thing or one word that we all fear and tremble before. Is the word death. The hope, the young, the tall, the short, 
Once they will hear the word death, they will see fear in people in people's faces. It means no one of us pray for death to come. No one also prepared for death. But it is certain that this death will surely come one day. That day, no one knows. Because nobody can tell. But we cannot escape it. And that is why I say nobody, no matter how clever, no matter how influential, no matter how connected you are, you cannot escape death. It will come one day. So this message is not for the dead, but for the living. So that we can examine and examine ourselves. And when we gather together like this for this kind of service, it's a kind of reminder that one day it will be your turn. One day it will be my turn. How prepared are you? That is why we must know that death is very, very certain. The powerful people of the world, or the wicked ones, cannot reverse it when it is time. They cannot reverse it, and there's nothing one can do to escape it when it is time. Now, I just want us to see two facts about the reality of death. Number one fact that we must know is that death came as a result of sin. Death came to the world as a result of sin. We all know as Bible students, we are familiar with the story in the Garden of Eden. God gave definite instruction to Adam and Eve that you can eat from all the three in the garden. But this particular one, you must not eat. But our first parents disobeyed the instruction of the Almighty God and God took them out of the Garden of Eden. Let's see what the Bible says about this in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 12. Romans chapter 5, verse 12 says, Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world, and death to sin, and thus death spread to all men because of sin. Can you now see? Death now spreads to all men because of what? Because of sin. And because of these people of God, I want you to examine yourself as you are seated. That's a common saying that the afternoon is on you. You know where you belong. The next man seated beside you, you can deceive him. Or the next woman is seated beside you, you can deceive her. But you cannot deceive yourself, and you cannot deceive God. Are you still wandering in sin? In a service like this, you must have to rethink and begin to make it right with God. So that on that day, and I know, it will not be a portion. And I pray that on that day, and I know, it will not be a portion in Jesus' name. There's a common saying that, and I know, it's always too late. It will not be too late for any of us in Jesus' name. Number two. The reality of death is that men have no say on the day of death. And this day we have say, but I think we will not die. But because we have no say on that day, on that day we will be powerless. The husband will not be able to help the wife, and the wife will not be able to help the husband. We have no say on that day. And that is why every one of us must be careful the way we live our life while we are still in the flesh. Why we are still in the flesh. Let's see what the Bible says about that. 
In the book of Psalm 55, verse 4. Psalm 55, verse 4. Let's see what the word of God says. My heart is severe pain within me, and the terrors of death are falling upon me. That is to tell you that man has no power on the days of death. That is why the service says, on that hour, at that moment, there was a pain, bitterness within him, but he could not help himself. On that day, you will not be able to help yourself. No matter how powerful you are, no matter how connected you are, no matter the amount of money you have in your account, you will not be able to help yourself. And that is why you must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I pray, grace to accept him. The Lord will release upon every one of us in Jesus' name. The second aspect, that is the point to note about death. Point to note about death. Number one is that the soul of man never dies. The soul of man never dies. Be it a wicked man or a righteous man. It's only this mortal body that will go down, but the soul will surely return to the Creator. Let's see what the Bible says about that. In the book of Matthew, just go ahead to St. Matthew, chapter 10, verse 28. Matthew, chapter 10, verse 28 says, And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hallelujah. If you listen carefully, the Bible is not saying you should fear him that is able to kill the soul, but that is able to destroy, that is able to torment, that is able to afflict the soul in hell. That is the only person you should fear. And that is to tell you that the soul of Baba Ebon will still live on until the judgment day. Every one of us will appear before the judgment throne. And on that day, you will give account of what you have been able to do while in the flesh, either good or bad. And after you have given the account, you will walk yourself to where you belong, either in the air or in heaven. I pray that day, hell will not be a portion in Jesus' day. Hell will not be a portion in the name of Jesus. So the soul of believers lives on in everlasting joy. That is our portion. As children of God, if you have given your life to Christ and you have surrendered all to him, I congratulate you. Because no matter what happened on the last day, your soul will live in that everlasting joy. You will be counted to be among those that will sing glorious hallelujah on that day. But let's see what will happen to the soul of the unbeliever, the soul of the sinners. We also live, but in everlasting pain and torment. The two we live on, but in different areas. You know where you belong. You know where you belong. You that destroy other people. When you see other children progressing, they are not happy. There is nobody that can come to you for help and you will just say, you know where you belong. But the Bible, the word of God is telling you, you still have another opportunity to be. Amend your ways. Look unto him. Go unto him. Serve him. Do his will. On that glorious day, you will see that your soul will live in everlasting joy. Number two, point to know about death is that death has no total power over the righteous. That is our joy. As children of God, that is our joy that 
then has to power, lose that power over the righteous. Let's see what the word of God says in the book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 21. Philippians, chapter 1, verse 21 says, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is what? Is gain. And that is to tell you that while we are still living, they are only living to the glory of God. Nobody chooses to be among the living today. Nobody that yes, I choose to be alive today. And you are beating your chest, you are only deceiving yourself. It's just the grace of God upon us. And that is why the word of God is saying, for me to live is what is Christ. So my living must glorify the name of the Lord. My living must draw men to the knowledge of Christ. And the Bible now says, even when I die, is one day. Because I will be with the Lord. And that is to tell you, if it is gain, then it means death has no total victory over the saints or the children of God. Number three, total victory is in death. Total victory. Today, by the grace of God, we may feel pain, we may not be happy. That Baba Ekotobi is gone. We will not see him again. But there is one of our people that says, I want Sumuni, I want Sekili, I want you alone. Baba Ekotobi, if he died in the Lord, is rejoicing. He's rejoicing. And that is to tell you that there is victory even in death. Let's see what the word of God says about that. In the book of Revelation, Chapter 14, verse 13. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. I read, Then I heard a voice from heaven say to me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they will rest from their labors and their work unto them. Hallelujah. That they will rest. Baba is resting from the trouble of this world. Ah, never has taken life. Not because I'm a Bible journey. Ah, our rule is bad. Mm -hmm. Ah, Boko Haram is destroying life. Not because I'm But it's resting until the judgment day. Finally, people of God, they have come to this wake of service. Of Baba Ibudomi, I'd like to remind you that one day, one day, it will be your turn, it will be my turn. And that is why I said, Death is starting. Nobody can escape it, no matter how connected, how rich you are. But what is important is that the way you live your life, and you will be the Lord, I shall say that. The Lord, I shall say that. If you are in the Lord, I congratulate you. But if you have not given your life to Christ, you can do something about it today. And that is why I say that there is no joint or collective salvation. That my father is saved, I am saved. That my mother is saved, I am saved. Salvation is what? Pastor. Salvation is what? Pastor. So, tell me yourself and come to the Lord. And on the last day, I want to assure you, you will be counted worthy to be at the right hand of God. Let us go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name because yes, you have spoken to us again about salvation. You want us to live with you on that glorious day. But Satan, our arch enemy, is struggling and struggling with us not to make it. Father, we pray today that grace, that enablement to defeat Satan and to reign with you, you will release that for every one of us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that as we journey in this world, grace to please you and to do your way. Grant unto us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, most glorious name, we pray.
Praise the Lord. We now invite any member of the family to come and give you a little thanks and also be noticed.
the peace of the Lord be with you.